Hi, this is Mr. Max. So today I'm looking at matrices, a very quick revision, and uh, I hope that you also have gone through this chapter a bit. And also you can look at previous videos of mine. Uh, I've done about five or so videos on this particular chapter. All right, so I have got three questions here and also in between I've got some notes that I want you to maybe um, just as a quick revision, try to go through. So uh, we have this question one here where you're supposed to find the values of X and Y. All right, so clearly it means there is an issue of multiplication, row by column in order for you to find the unknowns. And then um, I have here the identity of a unit matrix, some things that I'll quickly do with a quick two questions there so that you can see if you multiply any matrix by its identity then you should find that same matrix. I also will be doing how to use a calculator. I've done this before, but I'll just do a few just to refresh your memory. And then I'm going to talk about the determinant of a matrix, okay? And then also maybe show you how to do that on a calculator. And uh, I have a few questions on that. And then I'm going to talk about more in brief about the determinant of a matrix, what it is not, and then the inverse of a matrix. All right, and then I have a few questions. So we use the inverse of a matrix in order for us to be able to use questions of regard to solving simultaneous equations using matrix methods. So I have got two particular equations. I'll also be graphing them at the same time so you can see how these things will look on the graph paper or on the XY coordinate system. And uh, the second one or the last one there also simultaneous equation but uh, there's quite something interesting with regard to this particular simultaneous equations. Okay, so I'll also be using matrix methods where possible, and then I'll be showing you how to use that, um, perhaps using uh, graphs. All right, so let's get down to it. So this question wants you to find the value of x and y. So I hope you still remember how you multiply. So first of all, it's gonna be row. Then you multiply the row with the column, okay? So in this case, um, I'm going to take, maybe I'm gonna take it step by step, so it's three times one, which is three, plus x times two, which is just two x, okay? So I'm gonna do then the same, the same row, but I'm now going to do it with the second column, okay? So here, so it's three y, plus, okay, 3x, so it's 3y plus 3x, 3x, okay, so you have got 3 times y plus x times 3, so that does it then for the top part, so I'm going to then do the same stuff, but just at the bottom, so I'm going to start again with the second row, I'm going to multiply this with this column, so 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 times 2, which gives you 8. And then I'm going to do the same, and I'm just going to take that same row, and I'm going to multiply that same row with the second column. Okay, so that's going to be 5y plus 4 times 3, which is 12. All right, so all of this is supposed to equal to 7, 3, 13, 7. Okay, so from here on, you have got the two by two matrix, so you can actually equate each one to each element on the other side in order for you to find the unknown values. All right, so I'll be taking the three x, the three plus two x, and I'm gonna let that equal to seven, okay? So basically, I'm gonna take this one here, let it equal to that. Okay, I can also take the second one, but I prefer to take this one because I can actually calculate the value of x. So from here on, it's then very straightforward for you to calculate the value of x. So 2x is giving us as 4. So x should give us as 4 divided by 2. Therefore, I have the value of x. All right. So again, in order for me to find the value of y, there's no need, but you can take any one. So again, I'm going to choose this one at the bottom. It's totally up to you, okay? So I'm gonna choose the 5y, right? So just leave that color there. So 5y plus 12, and I'll add equal to this corresponding element on this side. So that is, um, perhaps 
just to change the color a bit. So I'm going to say 5y plus 12, let that equal to 7. And then you can solve this equation, all right? So that's going to give you 5y equals to negative 5. Therefore, y is negative 5 divided by 5. So the value of y is negative 1. Okay, so therefore, x is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 1. So that's how you are solving that particular question. Okay, again, I could have easily decided to uh, take the 3y plus the 3x and that is equal to 3. But then I'll still need to use my x that I got in the previous one in order for me to find the unknown. So here, you have got 80, uh, 5 plus 3 is 13, 13 equals 13, there's nothing you can do with that. So you could have taken any one of these others and then equal to corresponding elements and you solve for x and for y. Okay, so it's basically a straightforward question. Right, so what is an identity of a matrix, of a unit matrix? Now, first of all, it's a square matrix, like can you see this is a square matrix, two rows and two columns. Here you have three rows and three columns, and the diagonals, there's one on the leading diagonal, so you see ones here, and zeros everywhere else, and its symbol is by that capital letter I, okay? So that is what we refer to as the unit matrix. Now, the identity matrix is the matrix that is equivalent to one, and you will come across this when you are solving simultaneous equations, because you would want to get rid of a certain value or certain matrix and the way you do that is by multiplying that matrix by its identity matrix. So let's just show that if you multiply this matrix A by that we should get the same matrix. So again I'll take the long way and then perhaps after that I'll just grab a calculator okay and show you how to do that with a calculator. So we have got matrix A which is 2, 3, 1, 4, and we are supposed to, ooh, let's just correct that, that's terrible. So we are supposed to multiply that with the identity matrix. Right, I still hope you remember how one does that. So you take this row, it's a row and columns, and I'm going to add with that, for example. So I suppose I'm expecting a 2 by 2 matrix, so 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 times 0 is 0, okay? And then I'm going to do the same. Maybe I'm going to now start with uh, the same on the other side. So I'm going to multiply that with this. So 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 times 1, which is 3, okay? Well, and then obviously I'm going to come down and I'll take the second row. So I'm going to take the second row which is this one here, and I'm going to multiply and add with the first column, so 1 times 1 is 1, plus 4 times 0 is 0, and then I'm going to do the same second row times the second column. So I'm going to take the second row, and I'm going to multiply it by this column, which means I will say 1 times 0 is 0, and 4 times 1 is 4, adding 4 there. Well, so what do we get? Right? Just add those corresponding values. Well, we'll see that uh, we are getting nothing but 2 here, 3 here, 1 here, 4 here, which is equivalent to the same, to the same matrix. Can you see that? So when you multiply a matrix times the unit matrix, you are getting the matrix itself. Okay? So the same applies here when you multiply the unit matrix times the matrix, you should get the matrix itself. So we expect to get the same answer. Right, for this one, let me just grab a calculator, kind of lazy, just to show you how I will do that using a calculator. So basically I'm going to take, um, well, I suggest you go back to my previous videos in order for you to know how to use that. Of course, I'm, I'm using this FX570V9 Plus emulator calculator, but there are others, you know, that you can use. It will still give you the same result. Right, so I'm going to, maybe let me use um, this one here and see that we get to the same answer, all right? And then if we have time, we can do the other one as well. So I'm going to take matrix A. So first of all, I'm going to go to my setup, 
and I'm going to choose 6 here because I want to work with matrix. So I'm going to let that be matrix A, so I'm going to choose 1 for my matrix A. What type of matrix is matrix A? Well, it is a 2 by 2 matrix, so I'm going to choose 5 here. All right, so choosing 5. Now I'm just going to simply enter the elements, okay? So I'm going to press 2 equal to 3 equal to 1 equal to and then 4 equal to. Well, I can go ahead and press 1, okay? So that matrix is stored there, but I want a second matrix, all right? So I'm going to um, get that second matrix in by perhaps saying, well, shift, okay? I can actually go to mode again, and I pick matrix, and this time I'm going to pick pick two so I can have a separate matrix. And again, if you look at that matrix, it's a two by two matrix, although it's the identity matrix, all right? So I'm gonna choose five, so it's a two by two matrix. Well, it's one, we can just go around with the arrows, okay? When we press equal to, well, I can come down here and one here because the leading diagonal is also that. All right, so that is my matrix B, okay? So I'll press on again, which will let me just grab my calculator back there to see that, uh, so I'm gonna press on. All right, so I have it stored there as well. So shift four for matrix. So I'm gonna take matrix A, which is a three, and I'm simply going to multiply that, shift again, and I'm gonna look for matrix B, which is here represented by the number four. And if I hit enter, okay, can you see that I'm getting the same matrix? You have got two there, you have got three there, one and four. Okay, so you are going to get the same result when you are multiplying the matrix by the identity matrix. I'm just going to clear this display because I'm going to use my calculator again. All right, so please use your uh, um, whatever the method that you are in order for you to find the B, to answer B. We expect you to get to the same answer. All right, so any matrix? multiplied by the identity matrix gives you the original matrix and that concept is very important i want you to remember that concept when you go to the next questions where we are going to solve simultaneous equations so let's quickly talk about what a determinant of a matrix is well it's a special number and it can be calculated from a square matrix and uh, it must be a square matrix, same number of rows, same number of columns. And we denote that determinant by various ways. Sometimes we have a bar here with an A in between, or we just write D, T, or that A, then you mean I will be finding the determinant. So the determinant of matrix A, so I will be starting and saying the determinant of matrix A, okay, is going to be, so you take then your two, so let's say this is the leading diagonal here. So we're going to multiply 4 times 2. Okay. And then we're going to subtract my trailing diagonal or my second diagonal. Okay. So we're going to multiply this one, which is obviously you can see negative 3 times 1. So I expect 8 minus negative 3. So the determinant, therefore, is 11. Can you see that? Okay. Again, so you take your um, leading diagonal, your AD, so we're going to like AD 4 times 2, and we're going to subtract BC, the negative 3 times 1. In fact, you can also use a calculator for this one, okay? So just to quickly uh, bring that calculator to play to show you how you can find the determinant. So I want to find the determinant of matrix A. So that takes me back to my steps, find six for the matrices. And what type of matrix? Matrix A, and it should be a two by two matrix. Okay, can only find this for a, oh, sorry, let me, let me see, I just, um, I just have to clear this, all right? So let me just clear, start all over again, shift nine to clear the whole thing. All right, so I'm picking my matrix six, and I'm gonna let that be one, and I want it to be a two by two matrix, so I have to pick five. Right, so I'm gonna enter the values. So if I enter the values, let me just remove that. Okay, bring my calculator back to show you that. Well, you can use a calculator as well if you're such type of calculators, even the others. All right, so I'm gonna enter my values of four, the elements, equal to negative three, equal to, 
and then you have one hit equal to two hit equal to right so this matrix is stored on the calculator you'll see it says mat mat there for matrix so it is there so i want to find the determinant of the matrix or the matrix so i'm going to say shift and i'm going to press fourth matrix and you see here where it says seven so i'm going to pick that because i want the determinant determinant of what so again of matrix a so i have to go back to matrix a which is number three here and then close that well it should give me an answer of 11 which you can see corresponds with that so that is one way of doing it in order for you uh, if you have such things then you don't have a problem with that okay so um, this is just one but many ways of you finding the particular value if you were to use a calculator okay but you should be able to do this without a calculator okay let me do a few more examples so here we are supposed to find the determinant of this matrix so it's going to be then let me just change the color of my pen so the determinant of matrix B is you well, know you have the 1 times negative 2 subtract with 3 times 5 all right so you get negative 2 minus 15 well you get negative 17 Okay, right, so remember, this is your A, B, C, D, all right, so it's A, D, ooh, that is a horrible way of writing my A, D, so just come back there, so it's A, D minus A, D minus B, C, all right, so A, D minus B, C, just remember from my previous work there, okay, so the determinant there is minus 17 please confirm to make sure that you get the same answer of mine or ask me all right to we'll see if you get the same determinant let's quickly um use our calculator there again to see if i do get the same one so i'm going to quickly put in the matrix so six and i'm going to call that matrix a and it's a two by two matrix and it's one and a three enter five enter and then you have got negative two enter right so what i'm looking for i'm looking for the um let me just find this one first so i'm going to look for the uh, inverse or the determinant so I pick the seven and then i'm going to pick my matrix which i'm going to use number three here for matrix a well do i get negative 17 yes of course i get negative 17 which is the same answer that i got here okay so that's how you can use a calculator in order to make sure just that your answer is correct. Okay, so I will let you uh, pause the video and then you find the matrix here and then you tell me what this is. Right, so let us see. So again, you have 2 times 2 and then you subtract that with 1 times 4. Okay, uh, that 4 looks rather strange. So, um, I hope that you got to the same answer as me. So the answer here is four minus four, which gives you zero. Okay, now it's very interesting when you get to an answer of zero. Okay, so first of all, what you need to remember is that the determinant, well, it can be a number, it's not a matrix, it's a number. It can be a negative number, it can be a positive number, it can also be zero. When the determinant is zero, we say that this matrix is a singular matrix, all right? Because the determinant is equal to zero. Uh, but if the determinant was any other number, then it becomes a, a non-singular matrix. Now, because why is that important? Well, you will come across this notation and you should just know what it means. Non-singular matrix, okay? Right, so in this particular case, it's important and it's very interesting once the determinant is equal to zero. It tells us something and it will help us when we want to solve simultaneous equations. So basically what you need to take away from this particular point is that when you get a determinant of zero, okay, you will not be able to solve the simultaneous equation because when we do the inverse, you will come across something very interesting. Okay, so far we have looked at the identity we have look at the determinant, all right? So I have mentioned what these are. The inverse of a matrix will only exist 
if the determinant is not zero. Right, so how do one then find the inverse of a matrix? So these are nodes that you can have a look at in your uh, in your textbooks and whatever course you are taking in order for you to find what the inverse of a matrix is. Well, the inverse of a square matrix A, sometimes called the reciprocal matrix, is matrix A raised to the power of negative 1. You'll see me using a calculator there. So what you need to know is that if you multiply any matrix with its inverse, you get the identity. Now, we already know that the identity times any matrix gives you that matrix. Very important. Now, in order for you to find the, the inverse of a matrix, you need to find the, ident the determinant first. All right? And then you swap your A and D, and you change the signs of B and C. Right. Now, that's a whole mouthful. Let's, let's look at a practical example. Okay. So, we have got this particular matrix P here. So, first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the determinant. But you can go ahead and, uh, and do it, you know, many ways that you can. So first I'm going to find what is the determinant of this. Remember the determinant is you take minus 0 times minus 2, then you subtract negative 4 times negative 6. Well, so this gives you, in the first place it's going to be 0, because this is going to be 0, minus, well let me take away that times there, okay, because it's going to be now 0, minus, in this bracket here, you get 24, and you realize the answer is negative 24, okay? So that's my determinant. So um, just so I can quickly, you know, I want you to master this, right? So I'm going to quickly bring in, uh, well, I, I always clear my display here just to make sure that I do not use the same thing, okay? So it's going to be matrix A, so it's a 2 by 2 matrix, and at zero here, enter, negative four, enter, and then you have got negative six, enter, and then you have negative two, enter. All right, so on here, so I'm looking for the determinant of this matrix. All right, so the determinant should be negative 24. You can see it's negative 24, so I'm therefore on the right path, just to make sure, okay? but if you will very well, you will very well. Now, in order for you to find the inverse of this matrix, so the inverse is going to be of this matrix here. The inverse is equal to, you swap this leading diagonal, so negative 2, maybe, just to change the color, okay? Um, so you're going to swap this. So negative 2 comes here, and my 0 comes here, okay? Um, and then... What you do with the other diagonal, you just change the sign, okay? So the other diagonal is still going to be 6 and 4. So here it was negative, and now here it's negative 6. All right, so negative 4, negative 6 becomes positive 4. All right, so the, um, and then obviously, let me just uh, do one more thing. So the inverse, again, remember, it should be whatever the determinant, 1 over the determinant, okay? So basically, um, just to write it out nicely, it's negative 1 upon 24, and then you have negative 2, 4, 6, 0. Well, you can go ahead and you can divide each one of those elements by um, that. So I'm just doing it here because of space. So what you can do is you can say, well, the determinant will be negative 2 upon negative 24 because you are dividing each one by negative 1 upon 24, or negative 1 24. And then you have got here 4 divided by negative 24, and you have got 6 divided by negative 24, and obviously this is going to give me 0. I'm not even going to continue with that. Okay, so let me just uh, make more space available, and just take away some of this stuff here. Okay, hope that you still remember. All right, and I just want to simplify it a bit further. Well, so this one on top here will give you 1 over 12. This one here will give you 1 over, well, it's negative 1 over 6. This one here will give you, well, 6 goes in itself 1. And 6 goes in 24 four times, but it's going to be negative 1 over. And then this is 0, okay? It's written a bit ugly, but um, should get you should get the same answer, 
Right, I'm, I'm okay leaving the answer just like that. So to find the inverse then, that's what I will be doing. So this is the values I'm supposed to find. Well, the interesting part is that the calculator can also give you that, okay? So you can also find the inverse of that. Remember, this is uh, still my matrix A, okay? So matrix A is still stored, so I want to find the inverse. So I'm just gonna go back and get my matrix which is matrix A. So I want to find the inverse. I'm just going to press this x raised to the power of negative 1. You see that? And you hit enter. Well, you see, the first answer is 1 upon 12. Okay, there is as a decimal. The second one is negative 1 over 6. Okay, you see that? Then you have got negative 1 quarter, as you can see. And then obviously, you get 0. So, of course, you can also get use your calculator to find that particular value. It's very interesting looking at it. Remember, you can always go back and do, look at some of the videos I have done on this particular topic. Let's look at one more or two more. So we need to find the inverse here. You can pause the video if you want to, and then you can um, sort of find that. So I'm going to find the determinant of that. Now, the determinant is going to be the linking stuff, which is negative 6 times negative 6 minus 0 times 6. Well, the answer will just be 36. And then if I want to find the inverse of this particular, the inverse, it's going to be whatever the determinant, 1 upon that. And I'm going to swap this stuff around. So negative 6 and negative 6 is still going to be negative 6. Well, 0 and this one here becomes negative 6. Okay. So it's done nearly, but now you can simply go ahead and you can have negative 6 over 36, 0 over 36. That means you multiply the 1 over 36 with each of the elements there. Negative 6 over 36 and negative 6 over 36. Well, you can go ahead then and just clear that. So you get negative 1 over 6, you get 0, negative 1 over 6, negative 1 over 6. So all of this then is your inverse. You can use a calculator, you will also arrive at the same answer. But then there are many times and cases where I would leave my answer like this, especially when I do my simultaneous equations and only later on multiply by that scalar quantity into each one of the components. All right, here's one quick one again. You can pause the video. You should be able to realize something very interesting here. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, um, let's find the determinant of R. Well, so the determinant is negative 9 times negative 2 minus negative 9 times negative 2. Well, you see that you get a 0. All right. So this is a singular matrix, as I said before. So maybe I should just go back so that you can take note of the notes that I have recorded when I just put a few important things there. The inverse... So first of all, we said the, the, the determinant can be any number. It's not a matrix, it's a number. Okay, And you have to have a square matrix in order for you to find the determinant. It can be zero, like in that case, our determinant is zero. But here's the thing. This is a singular matrix, but then the inverse will not exist. And why will the inverse not exist? Why will the inverse not exist? So maybe you should have a look at that. So this is the bullet point I'm talking about, right? The inverse of a matrix will only exist if the determinant is not zero. So since our determinant in this particular question that you had to find, you realize our determinant is zero. If you have to find the inverse, and let me maybe just look at that. So the inverse of this particular, the inverse of this particular would be 1 upon 0. Now, I don't have to go ahead here. Here's the problem. The problem is this. You division by 0 is not possible. Okay? So, no matter even if you switch this stuff around, you know, you have negative 2 here, you have your negative 9 here, and you have 2 here and 9 here. There's no point in going further. So, the inverse does not exist when the determinant is equal to 0. And you will see this when I use it and solve simultaneous equations. Okay, so I have got two questions on simultaneous equations, and uh, it's very important. Now we're going to use everything that we have learned, and we're going to put it in perspective, and we'll see. All right, so very 
important, you must make sure your equations are always written in terms of x and y equal to some number. Sometimes they swap the y and the x, make sure they are in this order. And then you can go ahead and write in matrix form the elements, okay? So this is going to be 2 here, 3 here, 1 here, minus 2. So these are the coefficients of x and y respectively. So you can then put x and y here. And you say let that equal to 8, negative 3. Okay, so when you multiply back, and I hope you still remember multiplying row and column, okay, you will be able to see you get the same concept, the same equations as what I have on top there. So 2 times x will be 2x, and 3 times y will be 3y, and you can let that equal to 8, and so on. So it brings you back to that. Now we have done that. So the key is that we need to get rid of this matrix 2, 3, 1, negative 2, this matrix, whatever it is. So if that is matrix A, all right, times x, y is equal to, in this case I will use the values, we need to get rid of this matrix A. And we do not divide by that. Okay, that's not what we do. So in order for us to make sure that we get rid of that, We'll have to multiply that with the identity matrix because the identity matrix, uh, let me just repeat that. I made a little mistake there in that a little analysis, so just bear with me. So in order to get rid of this, you must multiply it by its inverse. Oh, the way the inverse sign looks like, all right? You multiply that by the inverse because it's going to give you your value of x, y. So um just to clear that up so that we can be on the right page all right so it gives you the identity so which means if you multiply this with the inverse then it's going to leave you with x y basically it's going to leave you with that okay so a times the inverse gives you the identity so basically that's how you cancel out that. So what you then do on one side, you should do on the other side. But I suggest that you multiply this on the left side. Okay? So what I mean by that is, uh, I might take a bit. So I'm going to multiply this with that. So on the left side, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Right? So if this is my matrix A, I will then have to find the inverse of matrix A. And, and, and it's very important that you, that you multiply on the left side because there's something that you're going to learn about multiplying on the left side. Because as far as matrices are concerned, um, AB is not equal to BA in matrix multiplication. And you will see that, what I mean. All right, so let's find the inverse. So I'm going to find the inverse of this particular matrix. And I hope you still remember how to find the inverse of that. So I'm just going to do it here. So first I'm going to say, well, let me find the inverse of that. So the determinant of, let's suppose, um, let's say this is matrix A, all right? Matrix A, the determinant will be negative 4, which is 2 times negative 2, minus 3. So the determinant is 7. And the inverse of this matrix 2, 3, 1, and negative 2. The inverse of that will be it's supposed to be negative 7. Okay, negative 1 over 7 multiplied by swap this around and change the signs there. Oh, that negative 1 is horribly written. Okay, so negative 1 here. All right, so leave it like that. So this is the inverse. So this is the inverse. So we know that the inverse times that will just leave me with x, y. All right, so that's basically how it cancels because it leaves you the inverse times the uh, matrix itself, gives you an identity matrix, and the inverse times that give you one. Okay, the inverse, let me just um, make sure that we are on the same path, just to quickly make sure of something here, that our notes are correct. So we're going to go back all the way to um, here. When you say multiplying matrix of an inverse gives you the identity matrix. The identity matrix, which is 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, the identity matrix times anything is equal to that thing. So what I'm doing here then 
is to get rid of, of this matrix A and multiply it because A times the inverse gives you the identity matrix. And the identity matrix times anything just leaves you with that thing. So X, Y will be on, on its own on the side. So what I have now to continue, I have got X, Y equals to, ooh, uh -huh. it's a little bit fast, but uh, I hope you follow. So X, Y will equal to that inverse, and you must write it on the left side, right? The inverse, which is negative 2, negative 3, what is that? Negative 1 and 2, right? Remember, we had to swap. We had to swap negative 2, 2, and change the sign. Times 8, negative 3. Right, so this would not work if it will not work if you were swapping the things the other way around. Suppose suppose you had something like 8, 3, and then you had even stuff like negative 1, 7, and then, you know, that there, it will not work. So let's not do that. Okay, so you will totally get a different, a totally different scenario, totally different answer. That is why I have indicated that your inverse matrix should be on the left side of that quantity AB or the number 8 upon 3. Okay, so um, from this point on forward, well, you can uh, go ahead and you can multiply out. So first what I'll do is I'm going to multiply, just to make sure that we have, let me pick red. I'm going to multiply these two together and then I'm going to use the minus 1 over 7, okay? So minus 1 over 7 will stay like this. So I'm going to multiply this. It's two rows, one column. Okay, That first one is a 2 by 2, and the other one is a 2 by 1. So you expect to have a 2 by 1. That means you are supposed to get um, two rows, one column. Yeah, two rows, one column, which we then let it equal to x and equal to y, okay? All right, I hope you remember how that is done, okay? All right, so um, let us just uh, do that multiplication. So grab your calculator, make sure that you have, you get the right particular values and that you do not make a mistake. So if you have negative 2 times 8, so maybe negative 2 times 8, well, that's negative 16. Plus negative 3 times negative 3, that's 9. All right. So we are done with that. So now we're going to take the second row. So the second row. So I'm going to multiply this, obviously, with that. All right. Are you with me? So negative 1 times 8 gives you negative 8. Plus 2 times negative 3. Well, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So basically, I can take away this positive sign. Okay, because I'll have 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. Now, if I go down further, I am getting very close to the solution. So remember here, is always equal to xy. So xy, xy. So now it's going to be negative 1 upon 7. Now I have, if you clean this up, you get negative 7. If you clean this up, you get negative 14. Only now will I... Multiply each one of those elements by negative 1 over 7. So basically, xy is going to be negative 7 by negative 7 over negative 14 by negative 7. Okay. All right. So get me closer to my answer. Uh, looking at this particular part, I'll say therefore, xy equals to 1. Two, which means x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. And these are my solutions to this particular simultaneous equation. Okay, right. So if um, these are the answers, let me just bring in uh, a very important concept with graphs. All right. Um, and I have pre, let's take 2x plus 3y equals to 8. If you had a look at my equation, my equation was uh, 3, 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. The other one would be x minus 2y is equal to negative 3. So 
x minus 2y equals to negative 3. You see that these two equations, they are, they are, they are meeting at this particular point here. Can you see that? And that's the point 1, 2. x is 1, y is 2, which are the solutions to my equation. All right? When you look at it graphically, x is 1, y is 2. So there you go. So this is then one way of looking at, at that. X is 1, y is 2. All right? But you were supposed to use um, you're supposed to use matrices in order to follow to solve that. So you need to know your determinant. You need to make sure you know the inverse, and then you uh, multiply from the left, always from the left. Okay, left of that quantity a over b or whatever the number is that you have there. Right. So there's one here that I want you to try. It's very interesting. Um, if you try that one, so let me just uncheck this ones because I'm gonna come back. And explain a small concept there. All right, so when you look at these two equations, well, you can go ahead and uh, write them down. X and Y is written correctly, so this is the same as 2, 1, 4, and 2. Okay, then you have XY should equal to 2, 5. Well, it's kind of written very fast. You with me so far? Right, so let us say we are trying to determine or to find the determinant of this particular, all right, because I always do this, um, let's say the 2, 1, 4, 2, let's say that is matrix A. So the determinant of matrix A is going to be 2 times 2 minus 1 times 4. What you realize is you get an answer of zero. So that means there is no way that this is going to work. Because if you want to find the inverse of that, all right, the inverse of that is now 1 upon 0, which does not exist here. All right, even if you were to go and swap those things around, you just pretty much waste your time. Okay, you understand what I mean? So it will not exist. So then, you can continue and say, well, solutions are not possible. All right. Undefined. The uh, answer is undefined because division by zero is not possible. So how would that look in graph languages? Is it possible that you have simultaneous equations that cannot solve? Right from the previous one, you have seen, well, you have got answers. And graphically, I showed you on a Cartesian coordinate system. All right. When we're looking at this, you have your Cartesian coordinate system. You get your lines, and uh, let's try to see well how those lines were. It could be that uh, one line, let's suppose one line went this direction, another line went this direction. Then, then you had the point where they intersected, and then you can give uh, answers for that. So there was it was possible, but this one is not possible because if you if you were to write this in gradient intercept form, for example, if you had to write the equation, if you make y the subject of the formula, you get y equals two minus two x plus two. That's so this one. The other one, it will become two y is equal to minus 4x plus 5. Now, what's important about this, if you are going to divide, this equation will be y equals to minus 2x plus, well, 2.5. So what is important for me here is not the other y-intercepts, it's the gradients. All right, if you look at the gradients, the gradient, the minus 2, the gradients are equal, and when you have equal gradients in straight lines, it means the lines are parallel, therefore they will never intersect. All right, so uh, let's look at those two equations. So one was the line 2x plus y is equal to 2. The other one was 4x plus 2y is equal to 5. And you can clearly see that these two lines are parallel. They will never intersect. The gradients are equal. In that particular case, we... Uh, are saying there are no solutions because intersection is not possible. Right, so I hope uh, that this assisted you a little bit in your quest to do quick revision. All right, I'm uh, 
I hope that you uh, that you study hard uh, and also do exam style questions um, and make sure that um, you spot papers maybe this time around it's towards the end of the year uh, and it hard work pays off and if you keep on doing the work believe me you will see the results